Hey guys, it's May May, and today we are using the Crafting with My Nomies paper pack to make an envelope mini album. Now, I'm going to call this the album that didn't want to get made because it's been really messing with me. I've been trying very hard. This is about my fifth prototype, but I think I got it. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need six envelopes. I'm using five by sevens. You're going to need two that you do not slice. Okay, so no slice. Two that we're going to slice on the left-hand side and two we're going to slice on the bottom. Now, I've made these notes for myself so I don't forget, okay? So, the two with no slice, I'm just going to put them away. The two with the left-hand slice, let me show you what that means. I'm going to grab my trimmer. The reason I'm doing the slice is because they're going to be pockets in the finished album, okay? So, these are my two. Look, I'm even using my note, my left-hand slice. So, looking at the envelope, okay, with the flap at the top, this is your left-hand side. So that's what we're gonna slice today. So I'm gonna lay this on my trimmer and I'm gonna take off the least amount I can. But what I want you to pay attention to is whatever you take off of this one, you take off of the other ones, okay? So literally, I am laying this to where it just lays over my cut line. I'm going to sink my blade. I'm gonna go up and then down, and let me say this to you, take your time. If you try to just push that blade through, you'll get a wrinkle and you don't want a wrinkle, okay? Now, don't worry about anything else. That's all we're doing right now, okay? So we're gonna do two envelopes like that. It'll be a little weird at first, but by the end, it'll all make sense. It's just, I just had a weird moment. This album has not wanted to be made, so all these little things I'm doing have turned out kind of serendipitous. Look what I just did, almost the wrong side. Remember, flat facing you. <laughs> left hand slice. Make sure you pay attention. I bet y'all were. You were like, wait a minute, you're not following your own instructions. All right, up and then slowly down. There we go. All right, so these are my two left hand slices. So I'm going to keep them marked as such. I'm not real good at this. I will forget if I don't. Now, these are my bottom slices. So the same thing. I want to look at the envelope like this with the flap at the top and this is the bottom. So I'm going to take off the tiniest little bit. I'm really just opening this envelope up, okay? These are not gonna be as hard on the end because you don't have the little flap to cut through, so this is pretty easy. So put that over there. Same thing here, flap at the top. Lay it just over to my cut line. Slice up and down, and now we have them open. Now again, I'm going to do this because this will matter in the assembly, okay? Next, we need to do a little bit of scoring. It's not hard scoring, just a tiny bit. And here's what we're going to do. Let me get my scoreboard. Okay, we're scoring them all the same. So it doesn't matter which ones you get at this point. I'm just going to put that to the side so I can keep up. We're going to score them all the same. I need to score them on the envelope flap. All right, so I'm going to get my bone folder. And I'm going to lay this into my scoreboard. I'm not really worried about the measurement itself because here's what I want to do. I want to score back from this fold line, three eighths of an inch. So back from the flap fold, all right, I wanna go three eighths. So that means I'm gonna count one, two, and then three and score. What I'm giving myself is a three eighths inch gap between my pages. So my signatures will be three eighths of an inch apart from each other, okay? So there's one. Now, you technically don't have to do both of these with the score mark. I'm going to do it just so I, I don't mess myself up later, but you technically only need one of these with that score mark. But just go ahead and do it. It won't hurt anything, and this way, if I don't pick up exactly the right one, they've all been scored. So these are my two no slicers. You don't have to be as organized as this, I don't think. Maybe you will. All right, my left-hand sides get the same treatment, okay? So we're going to put this into our scoreboard. I'm going to count over th um, three clicks, so one, two, three, and give it a three-eighths of an inch score away from the flap. You're thinking, but why is that, Meme? Well, let me explain it. I This is going to be the gap between my pages, what we're creating right here, and I don't want it to be a quarter of an inch. I want it to be slightly bigger than that, and I know by the time I calculate for the width of my bone folder and all of my miscalculations or my little bit of paper off, if I don't do it this way, I will I will get exactly a quarter of an inch, and that'll be too small. So we're doing the three eighths. All right, same thing here. Bottom slice ones. I'm gonna open this up. Count over three clicks from the fold. So one, two, three, 
and score. And then the last one. Just trust me, <laughs> right? Just try it. Do yours the same way I'm doing mine. It'll all work out. All right, so I want to write by, put my bottom slice back on here so we can get rid of this. Now it's time to assemble, and this is why the bottom slice matters. Now, we're going to have a blog post for you guys. So you won't have to have all these notes, but I'm going to be assembling it in this manner, which is no slice, top, bottom, top, bottom, no slice, okay? So bear with me. I'm going to leave my little notes to the side. So I'm going to take my first one that is a no slice, okay? And with this one, all I really need to do is push this flap to the back. Because what I want to do here is expose this section, all right? So I'm going to push that one to the back. Now I'm going to look at my little list here, and I'm going to go and take one that is the left-hand slice, okay? So I'm taking one that is a left-hand slice, and I'm going to push this flap, but I'm going to crease it as well on my fold line, okay? So I'm going to do both of those folds. So I folded back the flap and I've also folded my score, okay? Then this guy is gonna get glued in to my other envelope, all right? So let's do that real quick. We're gonna glue three sides, just like this. I'm gonna go here and then down the length and then back down, okay? And this is now going to go inside of my first envelope. So I'm gonna lift this up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this in just to the score line we made. When you do this at home, this will make sense. So I'm going just to the score line that I made. Okay, get that little bit of glue off of there. What we just did was we closed that up completely. Okay, so now with this piece we have, we wanna close this over like so. And at the top here, I need to seal this little section down, but only at the edge. You'll see why. I'm just going to put a little glue here just to hold that in place. Don't stress about that. This is going to be a pocket, and we're going to be adding cardstock here, and that'll add stability. But for now, that's held in place, okay? So that is our first signature, all right? So we've got, this is our cover, believe it or not. This is our mini album cover, and this is page two. Now we're gonna take one that has a bottom slice and we're gonna do the same thing, okay? We're gonna take the flap backwards to, op to show us this section here, okay? And we're gonna fold our score line to give us our separation or our space, okay? And we are gonna put glue on the back of this three sides. So up one side, down here, and then down here. And this is gonna feed into our last envelope. I did that wrong because you don't need that top sealed down. So I'm going to unseal that because I totally messed that up. I was not thinking ahead. So I'm just going to take that off. If this happens, you do the same thing. All right, and then I'm going to put this in, and this is going to be what holds it in place. See, I wasn't forward thinking on that one. So that will hold that in place, and it basically creates the exact same thing. Okay, so you now have two of these put together, but you're probably questioning something. You're like, wait a minute. The ends are open. Do not worry about this. We close this whole thing up. None of this will happen when we finish, okay? Just keep rocking along with me. All right, so we have a no slice, a top slice, and a bottom slice. So what do you think goes next? That's right, a top slice. So I'm gonna pick up my top slice. This is the one I've sliced here. I'm gonna fold my flat backwards, fold my score mark, all right? Then we're going to glue this one into place just like we've done the other three sides. So one, two, three. And then I'm just going to open this one up, open my previous envelope up. Y'all probably can't see what I'm doing. You can see it. Open that envelope up, okay? I'm going to slide this guy in here and this guy in at the top. And all we want to do is put that to the fold we made, not the original fold, but the score line we made and then crease that all down. I'm rubbing all that glue off. I need to be using a cloth to do that, but there we go. All of this gets covered up. We're not too worried about any glue or anything showing. So you see, now we have three pages together, all right? Now we're gonna continue, and this time we're gonna use one that is the bottom slice, all right? Fold the flat back, fold the score, glue on three sides, and then tuck this in. It becomes repetitive. It gets easier and easier every time. So just lift that up, 
glue that into place like so. Probably have a little excess glue in there I need to clean off, just a tiny bit right there, a little bit right there. And then we're gonna do our last page. And the last page is gonna be the, first, the one that has no slices in it, okay? But we're doing it exactly the same way. We're gonna fold back and then fold our little section, okay? We're gonna add our glue to three sides of the back of the flap, just like so, and then add it in. Now, this might have been confusing. I don't know. It, I might have told you okay, but it might have been confusing. Go back and watch this again before you start assembling. It'll all make sense if you'll do that, okay? So now we have all of this together, but again, you're like, but it's not together, but it will be in just a minute. Just wait till you see what happens. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is lay all of this down, including this flap, so I can now access every bit of this, okay? And here's where it gets really neat. To me, it does anyway. We're gonna use this flap to help us build stability and to close everything up. So I have in the store this really wide Elizabeth tape. You don't have to use this, but this one's gonna work really great for me on this in this application. So this is what I'm gonna use. You can just use regular tape and just lay it on here, but I'm gonna use this one because I can do it faster. So I'm gonna place this down and cover up as much of this as I can with my tape. And let me show you my cutting secret for this. I'm just gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna lay it here to the end and I can look underneath it and see where I need to slice. So I've got that sliced off like that. So this is pretty much covered. Anything hanging off, I can fold in. Now this next little bit right here, I can lift this up and add a second piece or I can lay in thinner pieces if I want to. I'm going to lift this up and add a second piece because remember, I'm adding stability here. So I like the idea of the adhesive flapping over. So you see where this is hanging over the edge? Watch, if you'll just pick it up with your bone folder, you can just lay it in. And all that is is extra strength. That's all that is. Anytime you fold that adhesive onto itself, it just makes it stronger. Okay, now we're gonna take a second piece and I'm going to lay, I want this one to just go to there, just to the edge of our little binder there. So I'm gonna lay it down like so. This is covering this up. I wanted this tape for this purpose. I wanted it to help with bindings because I think it's gonna be great for that. All right, so use a ruler again to cut that away where I need to, like so. That works out pretty cool. I'm gonna rub this down, reveal it. You're like, Mame, what are you doing? Just hang out, just hang out. It's pretty cool, just hang on a second. All right, so I got all that in there. Now let's tuck this down where I'm hanging off, tug that in like so, there we go. Okay, now that flap is going to fold back over here. You ready? I'm gonna take this flap and where it folds, it is going to now go all the way over. See how slow I'm doing this? I want this to stick down to itself as smooth as possible. If I get a little wrinkle, it's not the end of the world. So you see that? So that flap has now folded over our binding. It closed all of our open pockets and it's holding everything together. Now what I wanna do at this point is I wanna push this last page back. So I'm gonna fold this down like this, get it nice and square. You'll have to kinda of hold it and play with it. And you want to fold this just like that because your flap, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm laying this all out, rubbing it all down. This flap is wider than your actual piece. So it wraps over your last page and you just want to fold that into place. This is so sturdy, okay? It's not gonna be seen. We're gonna hide it because it's not pretty, but you know those thin envelope pieces are not going anywhere. They are all stuck down. You know that all of your envelope pockets are sealed shut because you've got that adhesive in the back. I got that one a little bit crooked. Now, let me show you something. You're the boss of paper, okay? So if you have these little wrinkles, just rework it. Just roll that out and just tell it to fold in a different place and it'll lay down better for you. And then this one, I'm gonna do one more time, just like so. Now there is one place we ended up not sealing, only one spot, and that is right here, okay? 
you really don't have to worry about that because we're going to cover that with cardstock. But if it concerns you, if you're nervous about it, you can just add a little glue in here. Again, it won't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because this is not a pocket page. Okay. So none of that makes a difference. All right. So how cool is that? I love when we can use, it's not supposed to stand up. I was just doing that. I love when we can use every little bit of our envelopes. Now you're thinking, but it's not going to look cute. It is because here's the deal. I'm not even going to add chipboard covers to this. I want this to be super easy, okay? So this piece and this piece are going to make our covers on our back. We're going to add a chipboard spine, and then we're going to have pockets in the top and pockets in the side. Super cool, right? All right, let's do our chipboard spine area. Now, normally, I would give you a measurement here. Let me tell you why I'm not giving you a measurement. Your spine, no matter how perfect your score marks are, is not going to be exactly the size of mine. It never is. And mine is probably not an even number because I use th um, eights, remember? So let's measure. So mine lands at uh, one and five eighths. So could I cut some chipboard one and five eighths? I could. But instead, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace my spine onto my chipboard. So I'm laying it flush on one side over there. And I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to trace this and cut exactly what I need for this particular album because I don't want a lot of hangover. I want it to really just fit. So I'm going to slide this guy up to the edge and I'm going to trace the bottom. So when we take this off, we'll see what we need. Even though I went a little crooked, I'll just straighten that out when I put it in the trimmer. So I'm making my spine custom. Now, you probably want to do that too, because like I said, no matter how perfect you cut, no matter how, no matter how perfect your envelopes are, you know, just like mine or what have you, they're not going to be exact, okay? So now I'm just going to take my chipboard trimmer, I'm just going to cut through that, and I probably need to take it on the back side too, but let me get some of this length off real quick. And you can totally do this with your scissors. I'll show you, because with your scissors... I mean, it's not hard to get to, right? I think that end's almost cut through. I'll just use my little snips. You literally could just cut this with your scissors. You don't even have to use a trimmer for it. So this means you can use your chipboard scraps, you know, that you just have laying around. It's a perfect place to use it. Now, don't worry about the chipboard because you think we're going to see it. No, we're going to cover it up. You're probably thinking, where are your long scissors? I don't know. That's why I grabbed those because they're not laying here next to me. Okay, now we want to cover this, all right? And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of look at what width I'm looking at here, okay? I like to have a half an inch on both sides to be able to wrap over. So what I'm going to do is take my Tim Holtz ruler and lay it a half an inch off and then come over here and see what's half an inch on this side. And because I don't want to deal in eights, I'm just going to go to the next biggest mark, which is two and three-fourths. I don't care if I have extra to wrap over. I just don't want too little, okay? So two and three-fourths. And then on the end, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add half an inch here and then half an inch here. So this one I'm going to cut at eight and a half. So two and three-fourths by eight and a half. Now, I'm going to make a note of that for myself. Now, we're going to put these measurements in the blog but you need to measure, okay? You need to make sure you're using the right size for you. So let me cut a piece of cardstock. So this piece is two and three fourths by eight and a half. And I want to caution you about something. The photo play paper that I'm using, the gnome paper, is not quite thick enough to do this job. And the reason it's not is I found when I score it, it cracks really bad. And I don't want that to happen on my spine. So I decided just to cover it in black. And then if I want to decorate it, I can. And I do kind of have an idea, idea about decorating it. So I'm just going to cover this in black. And it'll match everything. And I won't have to worry about it cracking funny on the edges. Okay, this guy needs to get glued down to the middle. So I'm just going to wet glue this down. There's no reason to use all your tape here. So let's just put some wet glue. This is just holding this piece in place for us. So this will work just fine. And what I want to do is just kind of center this. Just eyeball center it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just covering this whole piece up anyway. All right. So I'm just going to do that like that. Do that like that. I'm going to flip it over and roll it out like this. Perfect. Now what we want to do, I'm going to close this up because I'll probably use sticky tape for this next part. All right. Now what I want to do is miter these corners and take some of this bulk out here on the bottoms and on the corners. So here's how I do it. I want to stay about the width of my scissor blade away, 
okay? So I want to leave about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch away and cut that point or that edge, okay? Let me lay that where you can see it. What this is doing is taking all this thickness out of the corners that you don't need, but the reason you can't cut straight to that cardboard is because if you do, your cardboard's gonna show. Now, if that doesn't bother you, or if you plan on inking it or something like that, then cut right to it. But I like to leave myself just a little space there so I can cover it up, all right? Now, let's add tape. You could have added tape beforehand, but I just typically do it like this. I just kind of add it at this point. And you can put it directly here, watch this. We can just lay it here and know that when we wrap this over, all of the paper will have adhesive on it. Or you can put it on your flaps. But for me, this works just fine. So I'm gonna make sure I have it all the way around. You can see that my liquid glue kind of curled my chipboard up. That'll all go away. Don't worry if that happens to you too, don't even stress because you're gonna be putting it on that spine we've already created that has a pretty good bit of stability already. All right, so now, very important thing. I told you I used this particular card um, cardstock so I wouldn't get the cracking, but I'm still going to score it. So I'm going to come right beside the chipboard, and I'm going to use my bone folder, and I'm going to score that, okay? And I'm pushing really hard. You saw how I slipped. Pushing really hard because I'm just scoring this down onto my firm surface. You could put a mouse pad under it or something if you wanted to to get like a deeper score, but this will work just fine. All right, so now I'm going to take the paper and I'm just going to slowly and easily press that over. And I get such a better fold here. With the photo play, I was getting cracking when I was trying to cover some chipboard and I don't want cracking on my spine. So go slow and kind of work it to let those fibers move. You could even um, you could even fold it one way and then fold it back and fold it again so you get even a better fold. But I'm just doing it just like this to get us going. And then we're gonna reveal our adhesive and stick that inside to it. All right, so now let's pull all of this off. If yours cracks, it is not the end of the world. I did not like how it was looking with that paper when it was cracking. And I tried inking it and I just didn't think it hit it enough. So that's why I decided for my spine, we were just gonna use a solid piece and something coordinating that I knew wouldn't crack too bad. All right, so by the way, this is Brutus Monroe Raven. All right, so I'm going to fold these pieces in like so, and then bring these pieces in to their adhesive. Isn't that easy? If you put the adhesive on there, you know everything's getting tape on it. I'm gonna rub this down to burnish it down. That becomes our spine. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to put this on yet. You can wait if you want to, okay? This is gonna get glued right here. And see how great it's gonna fit because we, we size it just for our book. This is gonna go right there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna wait. I might wait. <laughs> I don't have to wait, but I might wait and see what happens. Why don't I do that? If you want to go ahead and glue this down, you can, but I think I'll wait and decorate the book and then put my spine on and see how that goes. I've never done it that way, so let's see what happens together. Now you're thinking, May May, why did you not put covers in the back on? Listen, I thought this thing through and I think it's gonna work fine, so stick with me for part two when we start decorating the book and then we eventually put the little spine on because that's where it's gonna live. And I don't think it's gonna need a chipboard cover and a back. Now, why am I doing it that way? I don't enjoy adding chipboard covers. They, it's a lot of work. Sometimes they don't do really well. They're not always my favorite. I've done them a thousand times. We'll make sure to put a mini album playlist for you guys to be able to watch. But I just wanna see how this does. I've made lots of albums where I don't do chipboard covers and I just wanted to see how this one in particular would do. All right, guys, that is step one of the mini album that didn't want to be made. I'm literally calling this one that because it did not want to be made, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you get to this part with me. And then step two will come out Saturday where we'll start decorating and then we'll add our little spine piece. But again, I think it'll be cool to decorate it and be able to lay everything nice and easy before I add this spine that might get a little bulky. So we're going to wait on that. All right, guys, catch up with me. It'll be fun. Grab some envelopes. We're going to use the card bases if you have a set too, or just um, card stock. We're going to do that. And we're going to finish this guy up. I don't know if this will be a two or a three parter, but for sure, we will be sure to come back and link all of the parts in the description as we go. So thanks so much for watching. If you're going to participate with me, you know I want to see your work. So come over to Discord and share your work with me on Discord as your process. And then when you're done, 
I'm going to ask you to post your finished project in our customer gallery. Don't forget to subscribe. We're so close to 300,000. Let's get there. Like this video if you did. And until next time, bye now.